Whereas the last exercise was a stabilized analysis, this is a value-add analysis. And the form that this is taking is significant vacancy upon acquisition. So we have 36.5% vacancy, or 63.5% occupancy, in months 1 through 12. And that's reflected in this column graph here. And then we simulate the lease up of the property through TIs and LCs. And what we're going to show predating the first set of TIs and LCs is actually going to be some common area lobby capex. So a renovation of the lobby in order to attract these tenants here. And then we'll have a second wave of lease up that occurs in year two to take us to 95% occupancy from 92, which is where that first wave of lease up got us to. And then I'll close this out and do the value of false. So the value of false is in the state where we do have a refi. What are we looking for? We're looking for the lesser of the second loan, the refinance loan proceeds, which we solved for in the block of lines over to the left, and the beginning balance plus the draw in that period of refinancing. So we'll say if current month, R54, is equal to, in this case, L71, which would be a non-zero value. Then take the negative of the minimum of the amount that we said was being borrowed from L97 and beginning balance plus the draw in that period, otherwise zero. The draw is going to be those periods of the TIs and LCs. So we'll say equals if and the value in row 13, which is our TIs and LCs, is less than zero. And the year number is less than or equal to when we're cutting off this ability to draw funds. We're presuming the mezzanine lender will give us two years of runway. Then take the negative of that TI and LC amount and multiply it by the proration, if any, for LTC, in this case, LTC is 100%, otherwise zero. And so when we take a look across, we see these are our TI and LC amounts being funded dollar for dollar by the MES. The interest payment amount, since we do have these draws over time, will be the sum of the beginning balance. And let's take a look and see how the MES did. So the MES did a 15% IRR. They don't want the MES to come out on top in terms of IRR, even though they're getting a larger dollar profit and a larger multiple on equity. There are a number of levers, naturally, that can be pulled and dials turned to try to get the equity to a better place. And namely, those are the participation percentage, the threshold point, the ceiling, and also the breakout of what percentage is current and what percentage is accrued. So there's a lot of items that can be tweaked to converge on the returns that the equity is seeking and then if you're the MES, to converge on the returns that the MES is seeking. Generally speaking though, this is a win-win because the mezzanine boosted their IRR from their 12% rate to something greater than 12% and the equities avoiding those other periods of negative cash flow.
Now let's take a look into the next line that's impacted, which is going to be our sponsor draw. So the change that we need to make here is we need to not charge the equity for some portion of the land cost. And that portion in this case is $4 million of the $8 million portion. And so the way that we accomplish that is by modifying the first part of the formula. And that's referencing the total eligible loan costs. What we want to do is we want to back out the value that's put against those total eligible loan costs by the land loan. So that is the draw in row 39. So it's a slight modification, but it's now saying only take the lesser of the pro rata amount of eligible loan costs net of anything that the land loan is going to put against those eligible loan costs, the lesser of that, and then once again, the commitment amount, net of everything that it has funded to date. What you end up getting is a percentage of profits that is not peri passu to how dollars went in. The reason for this is due to the timing differences that force the sponsor's invested capital to stay in longer than the investor's capital, which starts to come back as of the very first month. Now, if we take a look back at tab 19, let's just remember that these dollar values, so a pref of 5.002 to the investor and a pref of 704,000 to the sponsor, those are the same exact values as we had in tiers one and two. What we didn't explicitly show, however, is what percentage of total profit this is and this is, and we didn't do that because we didn't deliberately tease out of the distribution what is return of capital versus what is the PREF profit, which is what we just did on tabs 21 and 22.